Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sinus of FanDuel. Jim, NASCAR is back. Yeah, finally. It's been two months since our last NASCAR race, and finally getting cars back on the track under weird conditions, but also appropriate conditions given everything that's going on in the world. There will be no practice, there is no qualifying, the starting order is set by kind of a draw uh, based on where drivers are and owner points, so it's going to be strange but it'll be sweet to see cars back on the track. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's going to be weird having some semblance of sports back. You know, you can drive a car by yourself, which is what we need during quarantine, which is what we need uh, to get NASCAR back in action. And that's why it will return finally here this weekend. You've made a list of some of the higher priced players you like, the mid, uh, the mid priced drivers that you like, and some of the lower tier guys that aren't normally lower tier. We'll get to that here in a moment. But your favorite driver, the highest priced driver that you're going with this week, it's Joey Logano. He's over $12,000 over on FanDuel here. Why is Joey Logano one of your favorites here this weekend? Yeah, when I was trying to decide a driver I wanted to pin to in this upper salary range, I was deciding between Kevin Harvick and Joey Logano because they've both been good to start this year. They've both been good in Darlington. But Logano is $2,300 cheaper than Kevin Harvick, as Harvick is the most expensive driver on the board, whereas Logano, $12,200. That's a pretty good tiebreaker between these two guys. Logano did finish second at Darlington back in 2018. He had a top five in 2015, top, top five in 2016. So a good track history here. But what's more important than track history is current form. And Logano has arguably the best current form in the entire sport, entering this race because he won in both Las Vegas and Phoenix. And that Las Vegas race is key because it is the only race we've had so far this year at an intermediate track. Logano will start within those top 12 spots because he is in the top 12 in owner points. So he could have the potential to lead laps. And with 290 plus laps at this race on Sunday, we do want drivers who can run out front and tally some upside via lap slide. I think that Logano has the potential to do that. So we're getting a guy who is in the upper tier at $12,200. It's a really good salary for him. He's already won twice so far this year. He's done well at this track. I think that of the, of the studs, once you take salary into consideration, Logano's probably going to be the guy I ride with most often. Logano's simply cheaper than Kevin Harvick and arguably the hottest and best driver in the game. Of course, we haven't seen races in a while, but it's good to get these guys back on the track. Joey Logano, when we last left off, was the best in the business. Let's see if we can pick up where he left off this weekend. Oh, next for us, Jim, we get into one of your favorites. That's Martin Truex Jr., who's 11500 another high-priced driver here. Why is Truex Jr. on your list of drivers here this week? Yeah, I think the entire Joe Gibbs Racing team is intriguing here at Darlington because those first four races, they did get a win for Denny Hamlin at the Daytona 500, but they were disappointing relative to where they were in 2019. But they've had a long layoff now where they've had time to tune things up and make adjustments from those first four races. And I'm intrigued to see what they do this weekend. But I also want to safeguard myself because, you know, they did struggle and it's not a guarantee they turn things around. The good thing with Martin Truex Jr. is he is going to start deeper in the order than Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin because he is between 13th and 24th in owner standing. So he's going to start somewhere in that range based on where they draw. That gives us a little bit of safety where Truex doesn't need to finish as well in order to score well for DFS because he'll be starting deeper in the pack. But also Truex of the JGR cars, I think, was the strongest early on. He just had the, the finishes to show for it. He had some bad luck in all three races after Daytona, which has pushed him down in the owner points, which will allow him to start more poorly here for Darlington this weekend. He had an eighth-place average running position in Las Vegas. He had a ninth-place average running position in Fontana, 11th in Phoenix. So although the JGR cars did struggle, Truex still had speed. That's a pretty big plus as we go here to Darlington. And this team has also done really well at Darlington in the past because whether it's been a JGR car or a JGR affiliated car, they've won five of the past seven races in Darlington. One of those was by Martin Truex Jr. As he won in 2016, he led 76 lap at, at laps at this track back in 2017 as well. So this is a team that does well at this track, and we get Truex a bit deeper in the pack to safeguard us in case those struggles from early in the season do carry over. Eric Jones is in a similar uh, similar range here, so he'll be starting deeper back. He is $9,800, so I think that if you want to buy a bounce back out of Joe Gibbs Racing, Martin Truex Jr. is a top guy to turn to. Eric Jones is another alternative who is a little bit cheaper.
Joe Gibbs Racing should be in a good spot, hopefully, this weekend. Martin Truex Jr. starting a little farther back. Um, should open up some opportunities for him. And it priced pretty fairly here at 11500 Putting Truex Jr. very much in the mix. You mentioned Kyle Busch a few moments ago. What about his brother, Kurt Busch? He's $9,400 here this week on FanDuel. Why is Kurt Busch on the list and not Kyle? Well, Kyle's a little bit more expensive. He is $14,000, whereas Kurt is $9,400. <laughs> and I think that that makes a pretty big difference. The thing that I like about Kurt Busch, too, and this kind of goes counter to what we discussed with Joey Logano, because when we were talking about Logano, I said we should put more stock in current form than track history. Kurt Busch is very much more a track history play than current form. But I think he was good enough in those opening four races to still justify him here as a mid-range play at $9,400 because Bush has always been really good here at Darlington. He's had a top nine average running position in three straight Darlington races, one of which was with his current team. He was with Ganassi Racing for last year's race at Darlington and had a good run there. He led 94 laps and started out front. So flexed a lot of muscle with the team he is currently with for this race here in 2020. Now let's talk about the current form because Bush is another guy like Truex starting in the middle of the pack, which means he didn't get off to a great start this year. That's mostly due to bad finishes in Daytona and Las Vegas. In the two races after that, he finished third in Fontana. He finished sixth in Phoenix. So I think the current form is good enough, and the track history is elite, especially for a driver who will be starting a bit further back in the pack. Bush is $9,400. I think that if you are in this range, he is kind of a, a no-brainer guy I'd want to turn to. Eric Jones, similar at $9,800, but I want to go with some veterans at a, at a tough track like Darlington, and Kurt Busch fits that to a T and will give me some place differential upside to boot. Yes, you want to go with a driver that was hot, a driver that's coming out of the gate rare and a rock. But course history matters as well, and that's what you get with Kurt Busch. He's had a lot of success at the track and is worth putting your money on here this weekend. Right around the same price, a couple hundred dollars less, it's William Byron. And William Byron, not somebody that we, we go with very often here, but why is William, By William Byron on the list today? Yeah, I gotta gotta you know uh, contradict myself once again because I just <laughs> talked about liking veterans and Kurt Busch. William Byron's about twenty years younger than Kurt Busch, so going a bit counter to that here. And Byron, I think there is some risk here in that he could be more popular than he should be because he got a lot of buzz for iRacing because he dominated the Pro Invitational Series. So the betting odds have swung pretty low for Byron, lower than they should be, and that makes him dangerous. But from a straight-up DFS play position, I think that Byron still makes sense here at $9,000. And the big reason there is because Hendrick Motorsports, the team that Byron drives for, was awesome in those first four races. They were crazy fast, much better than they were in 2019. And Byron is the only driver in that four-car team starting between 13th and 24th in the field. So a little bit of place differential juice there. It also helps that William Byron had had a top 14 average running position in all four non-Daytona or all three non-Daytona races so far this year, including an eighth place running position in Las Vegas, which is really good because again, Las Vegas is the most similar track we've had to Darlington so far this year. Now, Byron, if you look at his track history, it's not great based on the finishing positions, but he had good runs in both those races. He had a top 13 average running position both times, including a 10th place mark last year. So even though he's young, he can get around this track. We also know that Hendrick Motorsports has some horses under the hood so far this year. So I don't put any stock into what Byron did in iRacing. I think that that does give us some danger here where he could be more popular than he should be. But if we're playing this thing straight up, William Byron is a driver in great equipment who has at least shown confidence at Darlington in the past and is going to start somewhere towards the middle of the pack. I like all that as a mid-range play at $9,000. Well, Jim, you're ignoring the iRacing history here from William Byron. Most players probably aren't, and that's why he's going to be in their lineup. But he's also in your lineup because, well, he's a good driver, and he plays for a good team or drives for a good team. The equipment's really good, too. All that makes him a really solid start here this weekend uh, over on FanDuel. And while the course history is not the best, it's not the worst ever. It's fine, making him a fine selection here in this middle tier. Let's move on to some of our value drivers, some of the, play, the drivers that are just – too cheap. And at $7,800, you get Matt D. Benedetto here, who is another driver that I'm not exactly overly familiar with. So why should our FanDuel audience make sure they get him in the lineup here this weekend? Yeah, so far, Greg, we've talked a lot about a, about a lot of cash gameplays. I think that Byron, Bush, and Truex all count for that. But 
Di Benedetto is more of a tournament play because he is going to start in the top 12. Uh, he will, he is in the top 12 in owner points, which means he's going to start pretty high. And for a value play that brings a lot of risk, but I also think that Di Benedetto has enough upside to make us willing to take on the risk that he has. I think that for tournaments, he's a really fun play. And the reason that Di Benedetto is starting up front is because he's run well so far this year for the first four races. That's why he's starting up front and that's a detriment, but it also means that the current form is good. And that's what we like for Matt Di Benedetto. And we've also seen Matt Di Benedetto run well when he had bad equipment. Last year, he was with a team that didn't have a lot of speed at higher pace tracks, but Di Benedetto still finished eighth here despite that. And he finished eighth with a 14th place average running position. That was really good. The guy who was in the car that Di Benedetto is in now was Paul Menard. And Paul Menard actually finished ninth in that race, one spot behind Di Benedetto, and that was in better equipment. So what we're saying here is Di Benedetto is getting an equipment upgrade and going to a track where he ran well last year despite not having the fastest car. That bodes really well for him at this track at $7,800. He finished second in Las Vegas, almost came through there. Uh, it was a long shot bet, almost came through for those who decided to back in there. He was top 13 in the other two non-drafting tracks so far this year. So, yeah, Di Benedetto comes with some risk starting up at the front for $7,800. But – he has shown already this year, he has top five finishing upside. He has really good equipment. The talent is there as he showed last year. So I think if you're going to take a risk, Di Benedetto would be my favorite guy starting near the front who checks in as a value play. The other guy is Eric Almarola, kind of similar. Uh, I don't think that Almarola has the same upside as Di Benedetto. I don't think his win odds should be as short as Di Benedetto's are. You, all the Di Benedetto's betting odds are actually longer than Almarola's, but maybe that means you can bet Di Benedetto as well. But I think if you're looking for a value play at the front, Almarola and Di Benedetto both fit that despite the risk they would favor Di Benedetto between the two Di Benedetto starting inside that top 12 he's run well he's got better equipment than he's had in the past and given his course history he should have a good shot here on this track to at least make some noise make some surprises and priced at just $7,800 Matt Di Benedetto in a good spot for you this weekend our final driver, I was shocked to see he's only $6,200. I'm sure you'll explain that. It's Austin Dillon, who's had a lot of success, of course, uh, on the tour as of late. And Austin Dillon, a, a popular uh, driver in fantasy circles here. Why is Austin Dillon so cheap this weekend? Yeah, DFS player Austin Dillon. It's probably why he's pretty popular with fantasy players. And, you know, I think that it, it makes him fun for sure. But he also makes sense from a process perspective here. Because like you said, it's hard to find drivers who have a good blend of current form and track history who are $6,200. But Austin Dillon does check both those boxes for this weekend. Now, he's going to start between 13th and 24th. I would like him to be on the bottom end of that range if possible. But even in 13th, I think that he would be okay just because he's so cheap here at $6,200. Looking at the track history for Austin Dillon at Darlington, he has two top 10s in the past three races here. He was fourth in 2017, 10th last year. Both those marks really good. And he also finished fourth in Las Vegas earlier this year. Now, that was a bit of a fluke finish because there was a lot of funkiness at the end. There were some wrecks. There were some pit strategies. So I wouldn't put a ton of stock in that finish, but he was running well before that too, as was his teammate, Tyler Rett. So top 10s in the past at this track, Top 10s recently so far this year, and RCR cars tend to have really good speed at this track type. They tend to out-qualify themselves for DFS, which is generally a detriment, but here, we don't have to worry about that because he will be starting at the highest 13th. I think this is good for Austin Dillon, $6,200, really good salary for him. I think that same line of thinking applies to his teammate, Tyler Reddick. Reddick is actually more expensive than Dillon at $6,600, but will be starting deeper in the order. So I think that both the Richard Childress racing cars of Austin Dillon and Tyler Reddick make a lot of sense. If you're trying to get below $7,000, they'd be the first place I turn because they can get you a top 10 while starting a bit further in the back, bit further back in the pack as well. Well, Tyler Reddick, Austin Dillon's have shots to get into the top 10, get you those points that you're looking for while starting all the way back. Both, players, both drivers in a good spot. Austin Dillon a little bit cheaper, and that's why we like him a little bit more. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry. Jim, we appreciate the time. We've had so much fun. We're going to do it again next week. Yeah, we're going to run it back on Monday. There's another Cup Series race on Wednesday. Four races in 11 days for the Cup Series. I could not be more excited. So I'll talk to you then to preview another race. It is great to be back and uh, just flying through the schedule now. Let's keep it rolling. More sports, more fun. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching the FanDuel Hurry Up. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the race and stay safe, everybody.